back here in this video tutorial on Microsoft Excel for beginners. If you are a new learner in Microsoft Excel, then this video tutorial will provide you all the basic things you need to understand is a beginner in learning Microsoft Excel. In this video, we are going to cover these topics which you see in the screen. First of all, let's start with what is Microsoft Excel software. The Microsoft Excel software is a application or software developed by Microsoft Corporation. It is a spreadsheet application that runs in the structure of row, column and cells. The basic use of Microsoft Excel software is for managing the data and information. In Microsoft Excel software, you can enter and store different kind of data and information. You can do calculations with the data by using different function and formula available in Excel. You can analyze the data by using different tools and formulas. Then you can visualize the data and information by using graphs, diagrams or charts. Now let's learn how we can open Microsoft Excel in our computer. There are couple of ways to open Microsoft Excel in PC. The first method of opening Microsoft Excel is click on the start button. Then here in the list of the program, you can locate Microsoft Excel by scrolling down. Here you see Excel is given. Sometimes it is also available in the Microsoft Office folder. So you can locate the folder then go inside that and click on this Excel which opens the Microsoft Excel software. By clicking on this blank workbook, you can go to the Excel user interface. The second method of opening Microsoft Excel is here in the search bar, you can type Excel. This will show you the Excel application by clicking on this, you can open it. The third method is press the window plus R key together in keyboard. Then here in this run dialog box, type Excel here, then click on OK. Now the Excel software will be opened. The another method is right click in the blank area of your desktop, click on new, then click on Microsoft Excel worksheet. This creates a Excel document here. Simply double click, then the Excel software will be opened. So these are the methods of opening Microsoft Excel in computer. Now let's understand the most important part of the Microsoft Excel that is the structure of row, column and cell. For this, let me open Microsoft Excel. Then click on the blank workbook. And here in this area, you can see the horizontal lines given by numbers. These are called row in Microsoft Excel. And at the top of this section, you can see the vertical lines given by the alphabets like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are called the columns in Microsoft Excel. And at the intersection point of every row and column, there you see a small rectangular shaped box. These are called the cell in Microsoft Excel. The cell has its own name. Suppose that here if I click, the name of this cell is D3, which you can see here in the name box. Here you see D3 is given. When I click on another cell, the name is changed. It is given as F5 because this cell is in the F column and in the row number 5. That is why the name of the cell is F5. If you want to know how many row available in a single sheet in Excel, you can press Ctrl and Down key together in keyboard that goes at the end of the row. There are 148,576 row available in a sheet. If you want to know how many columns available, then you can press Ctrl right in the keyboard. This goes at the last column. And if you count all the column, the total column available is 16,384, which you can test here by using the column function. The next thing you need to understand is the range. Range is called the group of cell. 
suppose that if I put my cursor here in the B2 cell then I hold the click in the mouse then select till D4 now this is called the group of cell these nine cells are the range from B2 to D4 this is also very important while working in Excel in this row column and cell structure we enter our data in every cell we can enter different kind of data or information it can be text value number value or a symbol or combination of number text and symbol now let's understand the user interface of the excel here in the top you can see a auto save button this auto save button is available in the latest excel only that is excel 365 if you have the older excel versions then you will not see this auto save feature the use of this auto save is when you turn it on every change you make in your worksheet will be automatically saved now beside this auto save button here you see our group of tools this is called the quick access toolbar here you can put the tools that you use most frequently like currently there are the undo redo button the fill color button format painter and save button is given but you can customize this by clicking on this small icon and from here you can choose what to put here and what to not by clicking on this this will go here in the quick access toolbar and by going to this more command you can add more commands here in the quick access toolbar beside this you can see the name of the workbook the name of this workbook is given is book one the next thing you see is the source box and this source box is also available in the latest excel version only if you want to quickly find out some tools then here in the source box you can type suppose that if you want to find the print button then here you can search it when you type print here you see the buttons or the tools related with print is given here similarly if you want to find here insert image then you can type here image then here you see the insert picture option is given the next thing you see in the interface is the username by clicking on this button you can know more about the feature and benefit of microsoft excel 365 the next button is the minimize button by clicking on this the excel will be minimized in the task bar the next button available here is the restore down if you click on this the window will get restored down by clicking on this maximize you can again make it full screen this is the close button this button is used for closing this workbook when you finish your work in excel sheet then you can click on the close to close this this file home insert draw page layout formula data review these are the tabs and within each tab there you see the group of tools like currently the home tab is selected and here in the home tab there are multiple tools available and this group of tool is called the ribbon this white part is called a ribbon and inside the ribbon there are multiple tools by using these tools we do different kind of work in microsoft excel if you click on another tab then you will see different group of tools given in the ribbon if you click on another tab here you see different tools if you go to page layout here you see different tools related with layout of the page in the formula tab you can see different tools relating with formula so these are called the tools and the group of tool is inside this ribbon and below the ribbon you can see a box that is called the name box here in the box you can see the name of the cell if you select some objects then you will see the name of the object so whatever we select here will be given here in this name box beside it you will see a formula bar this is called the formula bar where you will see the formulas and the value you put in the cell suppose that here in this cell if i write something then you see this will be given in the formula bar as well similarly if you write here some formula then this will also be visible in the formula bar 
here you see the same formula is available here too now let's come at the bottom section of the user interface where you can see this seat one and here you can add multiple seats if you if you enter a kind of data here in this first seat then if you want to enter another type of data then you can create here a new seat by clicking on the plus button then the seat 2 is created in this seat number 2 you can create a different data again you can add more seat by clicking on the plus button the next thing you see here is the scroll bar these are called the scroll bar and this is used for scrolling this window to right and left and to up and down by clicking on this here you see the window is scrolled to right by clicking on this the window is getting scrolled to left by clicking on this it will be scrolled down and by clicking on this button it will scrolls up the next important thing here in the user interface is this zoom option by clicking on this minus button the screen size will be small and by clicking on the plus button the screen size will be bigger the optimum size is 100 percent so here you can make it 100 percent so this is all about the user interface that you see in the excel software now let's learn how to enter and edit the value in the cell for this let me make the size of the window bigger then I'll select this cell. The name of this cell is D4, where I'm going to write a text value, which is development. After you type the value here, then press the enter key in the keyboard, then the value will be stored here in the cell. And here you see there is a spelling mistake, and you need to edit the spelling. To edit the cell value, you have to double click on the cell. Then you will see a blinking cursor. Then put the cursor between M and N where we have to put E for the correct spelling. Now after correcting the value, you can press enter. Then the value is corrected. The second method of editing the cell value is you can click on the cell then directly go here in the formula bar and from here also you can edit the cell value. Now let's learn how to enter a basic data in Microsoft Excel. For this here I am going to enter a basic data of sales for a company. First of all click on the A1 cell then write here the title of your data that is sales data of XYZ company. Now here in the A3 cell type item name press the enter key to go down or you can also click on the cell where you want to put the value and here type the item name for example television heater similarly add more items here now after adding the item names here here you notice in this A column the name are not perfectly fit so in this case you can increase the column size by simply click and hold between the A and B click and hold in the mouse then drag this to right and when the size is perfect then you can leave the click then here you see the size of the column is now increased now here in the B3 cell type the Jan month in the C3 type February in D3 type March in E3 type May in F3 type June now let's add some sales quantities here and while writing the number you can simply press the down key to go down in the cell up key to go up right key to go to right and left key to go to left now after writing these numbers here if you want to decrease the column size of these month wise cells then you can 
put your cursor here in the column B then click and hold your cursor then drag this to right which will select the columns from B to F now you can click anywhere between the two column names then drag this to make the column size smaller and here you see the column size is decreased and if you notice here I missed to put the sales of April month in this case you can insert a new column here to put the sale of the April month so in this case you have to right click here in the E column then click on the insert option now you see a new column is inserted between March and May where you can now write April in the header then you can put the sales detail of April month here now let's learn how to put our data in tabular format in Microsoft Excel there are many benefits of putting our data into table that you will learn in the other video tutorials but here I'm going to show you how to convert our data in table format for this let me copy this data from here select then right click copy then paste the data here by right clicking then click on this paste option and here in this data I am going to convert this into the table format so for that you have to select your data first then click on the insert tab and here you see a table option is given click on table then here you have to select my table has headers because our data has the column header this January February March April these are known as the column header including this item name now click on ok and here you see the data is converted into the table format and you can change the structure of the table by going to this table design here you can see different kind of table designs are given you can select any table design so this is the way of converting our data into the table format now if you want to delete this table you can simply select it then click on the delete key then the table will be removed now let's learn the basics of data formatting formatting means changing the visual appearance of the data inserting a row and columns inside the data applying borders applying the colors these all are called data formatting first of all let's understand how to apply the color to the cell suppose that if you want to highlight these headings of the report then you can first select it then go to the home tab and here you see a option that is fill color by clicking on the small button you can choose different color to highlight the cells here I am selecting this green color and here you see this green color is applied in the title similarly if you want to make the text bold you can select it then click on this bold option then the font becomes bold if you want to apply borders here in the sales then select this range click on this border option and click on all borders now here you see the black border are applied to the cell suppose if you missed one item here then in this case you can insert a row to include the item just below refrigerator if you want to insert a new item that is microwave oven in this case you can simply right click on this row number 8 then click on the insert tab then the row gets inserted here then here you can type the new item then you can enter the detail of the cells now let's learn how to put the header of the report here in the center position of the data in this case you can select the data from A to G because the data is from column A to column G after selecting this you can click on this merge and center tool now here you see the heading of the report is at the center of the A to G because by using this button the cell gets merged if you want to give some background color here you can simply go here in the fill color then choose a color from the color options 
now if you see here we have four seats we have data in seat number four but the seat number one seat number two and seat number three is blank in this case you can delete the blank seats by selecting them right click then click on the delete button now click on delete to delete the seat if you have multiple seats to delete you can select them by holding the control key in the keyboard then select another seat now both of these two seats are selected then right click in the mouse then click on delete option then the seats gets deleted in microsoft excel there is option to hide and unhide the row and column suppose that if you want to hide the sales of washing machine and refrigerator you can select these two rows by clicking on this then hold your mouse scroll down these two row gets selected then you can right click then click on the hide tool to hide the row now these two row gets hidden here if you see the row number six and seven is hidden here similarly to hide the column you can select the column you want to hide right click then click on hide option then the column gets hidden if you want to unhide this again select these two row where there is a hidden row right click then click on unhide similarly for the column also select these two columns between which there is a hidden column then right click click on unhide then it gets unhide now let's learn how to rename the sheet here in the sheet number 4 we have the data of sales instead of putting sheet number 4 here if you want to give the name as sales data then you can right click on the sheet then click on this rename option then you can give a new name here for example sales data now let's learn how to move the position of the sheet suppose that here if i have more seats then if i want to keep this sheet at the end then i can simply click on it hold the click then drag this to the position here you can see a small black icon is given which is showing the position of the sheet to keep it at the last position now here you can release the click then the sales data sheet is moved here if you want to keep it at the middle of sheet number six and seven then you can again click it hold the click then put it here between seat number six and seven now the seat gets moved if you want to give a different color to the seat you can right click go to the tab color option from which you can choose the color for the seat this way to create a duplicate of the seat you can right click on the seat then here you have option move or copy click on that then here choose the location where you want to keep the duplicate seat if you want to keep the duplicate seat at the end then you can click on move to end then here you have to select this create a copy option then click ok now here you see the same seat is duplicated here in the name of sales data 2 if you want to move then you have to right click move or copy move to end then don't select this create a copy option only click ok then the seat number 6 is moved to the last position so this is how we move the seat or copy the seat now let's learn how to use the basic formula or functions in microsoft excel suppose that here in this data if you want to calculate the total of sales for every single month in this case let's add here total in the row then select this row apply the border from here then to calculate the total here we can use the functions because in microsoft excel there are too many functions available to do different kind of calculation if you go to the formula tab here in the insert function you see different kind of function are given this is the most recently used function from this you can choose the function category 
from which you can find different functions or you can also source the function here like if you want to find out sum then type sum here click on the go and here you see the function is suggested so to add the values here we have to use the sum function now let's learn how to use functions here here to calculate the total we have to use the sum function and there is two method of inserting the function one is you can simply press e equal to in the cell then start with the function this way the another method is you can click on the cell then go to the formula tab click on insert function and here search for the sum function click on the go button and here the sum function is given simply select it then click ok now here in the number you can select the numbers you want to add so here i'll select from the sales of television till the sales of text of pc after selecting the range then click on ok and here you see the total is calculated so this is the first method of inserting function if you are learning a function for the very first time then you can follow this method because this option is more descriptive like if you click here in this cell click on insert function choose the sum function click ok then here you see it is describing what you need to put here here you see the detailed description of this number one parameter is given from which you can clearly understand how to use the function so when you click ok here you see the total is added but if you are familiar with a function or if you have already learned the function then you can directly then you can directly execute the function here by pressing is equal to then type sum sum function open bracket now in the number one parameter select the range then close the bracket and press enter then you will get the total now after writing the function here then you don't need to use this function one by one here in the cell you can simply move your cursor here in the corner of the cell when the plus appears then you can click and drag the function for other months then the result will be calculated similarly if you want to find out the count of these numbers or if you want to find out how many items cells are there then you can use the count function here so here in this cell type count then press equal to then type the count function open bracket now in the value one you can select this range till the last item then close the bracket press enter and from this you can know there are total eight items sales record now you can click on the fill handle then drag this suppose that here in the march month there is no sales of television and refrigerator then the count is given as 6 only because there is the sales of only 6 items 2 items sales is blank that is why there the count is given as 6 similarly here if I delete these 3 then I will get the count of 5 now suppose that if you want to know the average sales of television from January to June then here you can use the average function so here press is equal to then type the average function open bracket now in this number one parameter you can select the sales from January to June then close the bracket press enter now you got the average sales you can click on this fill handle then drag it down now here in the result of the average there are some numbers that has multiple digits after decimal if you want to keep only two digit after decimal then you can select this range then right click in your mouse click on this format cells then here click on this number option then here in the decimal places the two is already selected if not make it two then click on ok now there you see only two digit after decimal is given with the number so these are the basic functions in excel now let's learn what is data analysis in excel data analysis means finding the insights of the data or understanding the data more clearly suppose that if you want to know what is the maximum sales of television from january to june in this case you can use here the max function 
press is equal to in the cell type the max function open bracket then select the range from Jan to June close the bracket press enter now you got 34 unit is the maximum sales which is in the month of February from this you know that in the month of February there is the highest sales of television similarly the highest sales of heater is 34 unit which is in March month so by using this max function you know that the maximum or highest sales per month of every single item similarly you can use here the mean function to get the minimum of the sales so here type is equal to mean open bracket then select the range close bracket press enter then you will get the minimum of this suppose that if you want to know the sales value because here we have only the quantity in this case you need to hive the unit price of every single product here so let me here type unit price then here I am giving some per unit price of these items so after putting the unit price here now we can calculate the sales value by using a formula here so here let me calculate the sales value now here in this sale we can use the sum product function to get the sales value so here press is equal to type the sum product function open the bracket now here in this array one we have to take the quantity range of different items still here then give a comma in the array 2 we have to select the unit price range then close the bracket and press enter now we got the total sales value for the month of January this is given by multiplying every quantity with the unit price then the result of the multiplication will get added here now you can drag this formula for other month but before dragging we have to lock the unit price range here because what happens is if i drag this formula to the month of february then i'll get wrong result here it is given as zero because if you double click on the formula here what is happening is this range is multiplying with this blank range because when we copied this formula to write this sale reference moved one step right which is perfectly fine because for february we have to select the quantity of february but here also the unit price range is moved one step forward so in this case we have to lock this unit price range in the formula so here let me delete the formula from february month then go in the formula of the january month and we have to lock this range that is L4 to L11 so to lock the range we have to apply the dollar symbol before the column name and row number so here let me apply this dollar symbol before the row also apply a dollar symbol and before the L column here apply the dollar symbol and before row number 11 apply the dollar symbol now press enter and after locking this range now if you drag this formula to february if you double click this range is moved one step forward but this unit price range is now locked here it remains at the fixed position now you can simply drag this formula till the month of june and if the numbers are not fit here then you can select the column then increase the size of the column then the numbers is fit in the column and if you check on the formula every quantity range is multiplying with the unit price range now so in this way we can calculate the sales value so this is all called data analysis by using different formula and functions of excel we do data analysis to find out more about the data on what is sale linking in microsoft excel for sale linking let me create here the month name from january to june and here suppose that if i want to display the total sales value i can simply link this sale here i don't need to add the value again i can simply press is equal to in this cell then click on this 
total of the January month sales then press enter now this sale number B14 is linked with sale number B17 now if you click on this sale here you see the link of the sale is given that is B14 you can click on the fill handle then drag it to right now all these sales are linked with these sales and whatever change you make here in this data will reflect here too suppose if I delete this number from here then here you see the total sales value is changed and this value is also changed because this sale is linked with this sale so this is the basic of sale linking now let's learn the basic of data visualization data visualization means presenting our data in a graph or a diagram so that everybody can easily understand the pattern of the data suppose that if you want to present this month wise sales value in a line chart in this case first of all you have to prepare the data first of all copy these month headings now put it over here just paste this now again copy this sales values control C then again go here and paste the values here and while pasting the value here we have to use the value option because this cell contains formula so here to paste the value only we have to right click then click on this paste special command then here select the values option then click ok now you will get the sales value for every single month now here put months and below the sale type here sales value now to visualize this month wide sales value you can select this range then click on insert tab here you have option to insert the line chart click on this and here you can select this line chart option I'll select this line with markers option and here you see the sales value is now presented in a chart you can customize this chart by right clicking on the chart then go to format chart area by using the option available here you can change the visual appearance of the chart here you can put the color in the chart by going to this gradient fill now here you see this color is applied to the chart there are so many other things we have to learn in the chart customization which we will cover in the other video tutorial so this is the basic of visualizing the data here you can change the title of the chart by typing here sales value from Jan to June if you want to show the values here in every single point then you can click on the line then right click then click on this add data label and here you see the value is added so this is called data visualization in Microsoft Excel so this is all about the basics of Microsoft Excel that a beginner should understand there are so much more to learn in Microsoft Excel you can go to my channel's video page to see the other topics and this much for today's video thank you very much for watching we will again meet on next video tutorial